In the original Final Fantasy VII, Cloud hanging onto a broken ledge seconds before the reactor exploding, he lets go and comes crashing down, landing into a beautiful flower bed in an abandoned church located in the Sector 5 slums. The hole from the roof that caves in fills the area with a bright daylight. It feels warm and the music really complements the setting. Everything feels safe here. It feels like nothing bad can happen. The flowers are proof of that. They're resilient, growing in a place that supposedly can no longer hold life. They also take the fall of a grown-ass man carrying a slab of iron on his back. He is awoken by Aerith, someone who he barely even knows. Cloud begins to converse with her, not knowing just how much this moment would be the first giant step in drastically changing how Cloud perceives everything around him. The church is probably one of the most iconic things in Final Fantasy VII. Even if you haven't played it, you've seen this place before. It's as beautiful as it is subtle. A place of worship abandoned by its people with only a stranger tending to the only life that's still there, the beautiful flowers. This is the part of the story when you get to know just who this flower girl really is, but it's cut pretty short after Reno steps in and you have to escape through the roofs. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, the setup is the same. After fighting a really great boss fight, you again come crashing down from the sky into the church. You're awakened by Aerith and interrupted by Reno again, this time you get to fight him in an even better boss fight than the one you just did. You escape up to church as the ghosts guide you. What the remake does differently here is after your escape, when you reach the rooftops after everything is said and done. The game asks you to take it slow and absorb the area around you. It's even written into the script. Wait! Give me a moment! Don't just run off on your own. The atmosphere is amplified as the rooftops are rusted, they're abandoned, lifeless. It really shows you what Sector 5 is going through as you continue to explore. What makes this part of the game shine so much is Aerith. Really? In the small little segment walking back to her home, there's just so much personality in it, and you really get a feeling of being introduced to Aerith and who she is. Her upfront personality challenges Cloud as she makes conversation with him. So what's he to you? Looked like you knew each other. Maybe he thought I could be the greatest soldier yet. Forget it. Hmm? You mad? You worry too much. I'm not some princess who needs to be coddled. Shit. She jokes and makes jabs towards his cold front attitude he's so pressed to holding on to. It even gets Cloud comfortable enough to joke back. Don't just run off on your own. <laughs> Those are the words of a soldier candidate? So petty. Aerith is the perfect example of just how human the writing is in FF7 Remake. Something Square Enix has been kind of neglecting in other stories they tend to tell. Don't cry, Yasu. Here we have a character that feels so believable and real. Aerith is snarky, she's flirty, and genuinely funny while also keeping a sense of mystery as Cloud begins to question just what the Turks want with someone who supposedly just sells flowers. As the Turks are not just regular old goons, but people specifically tasked to get their hands dirty doing work for Shinra. I was really blown away the first time I played through this, as I wasn't expecting to get so attached to this chapter. For just a brief moment, it felt like all the problems our characters were facing vanished into thin air, allowing for them to breathe and catch up and be able to introduce themselves. This is just one of the most memorable parts to me in a game already so chock full of memorable parts. It's hard to explain what makes it so captivating to me. It just reminds me of taking walks outside with my friends, just making good and genuine conversation as we explore our town. This part really starts to plant those emotional hooks that really build up as the game goes on. And whether or not you've played the original Final Fantasy VII, you know what is to eventually come. You can't help but feel reluctant getting attached to this person, but getting attached to Aerith is exactly what Square is going for with this remake, and damn, did they deliver. Thanks for watching. Uh, my throat is pretty torn up, so I uh, hope I'm not getting sick, because that would suck. Anyways, if you like the video, be sure to like and comment on it, subscribe if you're new here. We also have a Patreon if you'd like to support us there as well. Um, thank you so much again for watching.